Mid afternoon, 21 year old Jen Tikote is ready to prepare the day's meal. Had it been a normal school year, she would have been in the lecture halls at a local university more than 400 kilometers from her rural home in Kajiado County. Outside her parents' traditional hut, also known as a manyata, her mother's friends break into song and dance. Jen is the pride of not just her family, but her village. She is the first girl in the village to go to the university. There was pressure, especially from women. Like they, they believe that when you, you haven't gone through the same, uh, like you, you are not a woman, you're still a kid, you're still a child. And there was so much pressure, uh, especially from the grandmothers. Her mother was, however, determined to change the destiny of her three daughters. I have seen other communities have developed because of education, and especially the education of the girl child. She is a beneficiary of a scholarship program for bright but needy girls, sheltered under the wing of NIE Africa, led by Dr. Lanoi Parmuat, herself a Maasai woman who has against all odds chosen to empower women and girls in her community. When you're doing the mentorship programs with our girls, we tell them, the door is open because already you have the key and that key is education it can give you different opportunities that you want to do so dr parmuat knew alone she could not win the battle and so she recruited foot soldiers now Maasai women like her, who had experienced firsthand the harmful effects of traditional cultural practices like female genital mutilation and forced child marriages. Judith Daniloi is among the first converts. In 2006, she began rescuing girls from undergoing the cut. <laughs> I told them, I've gone to hospitals, there are no Maasai women doctors. I've gone to schools, I've not seen female Maasai teachers. And I told them, the minute you circumcise your daughters, they lose interest in education. And instead, they focus on marriage, even when they are very young. Gradually, they have seen sense in my campaign. This campaign has seen a turnaround in the community. Now, those with an education are admired and looked up to as mentors. To be role models. I know most of the girls, it, it's not that like the, um, it's not like they don't have dreams. At least they don't see a person who is older than them, a person that they can imitate. So at least I can be there. At least the small girls, they can look up to me and say that yes, I want to be like, like Jane. Enter the coronavirus pandemic. Before COVID, would hear a lot of advocacy, noise out there, voices uh, raising hands and shouting and supporting the girls out there. But COVID made it silent. So everything is done indoors because the rules say stay in your house. And the gains made over the last several years are now at risk. They are girls and boys who are going through circumcision. They are not healed. So some of them will miss the whole of this year. They will not be able to go back to school. We have also challenges of teenage pregnancy. 17-year-old Anita, not her real name, cuddles her one-month-old baby. She tells us of mixed emotions, regret overcomes the joy that comes with motherhood for this Form 3 student. Life will be tough for me because my dad is already saying that he'll marry me off. I'm worried that this pregnancy might spell an end to my education. Anita's story, now the story of the single most devastating side effect of COVID-19 for the girl child, not just here in Kajiado County, but across Kenya, where the health ministry reported that during the first three months of the lockdown, 152,000 Kenyan teenage girls became pregnant, a 40% increase in the monthly average, and I Africa scholars have not been spared. It's so heartbreaking that at this moment we've lost about 20 girls 
We have three girls who will not go back to the university during this semester. And we have about six girls at high school. And we have seven girls that we have in primary school because of teenage pregnancy. And by the way, we have three girls. I have a vivid case of one of them that when we were out in the field, three girls have been married. As Kenya prepared to reopen schools, it is clear that it will take more than just a peck on the surface of the inequalities that the girl child has been exposed to during the pandemic period. Sarah Kimani, SBC News, Kenya.